Hi guys, Dennis here from Denny Bob's RC. I'm going to go through how to change out the pinnel hitches on the RC four-wheel drive big boy trailers. I had a little confusion when I was trying to do it, so maybe this will help somebody not make the same mistake I did. Um, I should have paid a little more attention is what I should have done, but I'll kind of go through it. The um, I did I bought these from Horizon Hobby. Uh, the, 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 the trailers and the pinnel hitches, they're both branded RC four wheel drive yet, but I bought them from a different source. Uh, they had them all on sale. So, uh, normally I think the pinnel hitches through RC four wheel drive are like $25. I got them for 15 from Horizon Hobby. So save money when I can, where I can. So let's go through it. Yeah, it's a pinnel hitch kit is what it is. It comes with the uh, both the male and female ends of it. It comes with the loop and the pinnel hitch that goes on the truck. And uh, I'll kind of show you how this all kind of gets attached to it. It's actually pretty simple. But uh, I'll get the camera set up here and we'll go through it a little bit. Now, hopefully this all kind of goes smooth anyway. Um, the original hitch is a, is a ball hitch that you have to pull the, that back and then you slide the ball out. It's just like a little, um, just like a hitch ball on a, on a regular trailer. But, uh, we're going to install these. Now, let's see. Pull out this little hair clip. Of course, I don't have my little pliers sitting right here right next to me that's all right anyway take that little hair clip pull that apart and set that off to the side all right so we got the panel hitch now you turn the trailer upside down or on its side or however you want to do it and then you're going to need a 1.5 mil uh, hex drive and there's a set screw that goes through here and it's pretty long hopefully it comes apart <clears throat> I didn't see this hole to begin with so I had this front of this trailer completely tore apart trying to get it figured out how it was going together so I'm going to try and do this so it kind of eliminates a, an issue and there's the hitch comes out now there's already four M2 holes drilled and tapped in the front of this hitch already. And there's four holes in here. So it's pretty simple. Um, I'm going to do one thing though. I'm going to go in here and get an M2 tap. And just make sure these holes are all pretty clean. Um, they get painted and then they get filled with with um, paint and whatever else and uh, I had one earlier that was kind of um, tough to get started in there but not everybody's got all these M2 taps I have M2 tap M3 taps fours fives um, I got a lot of different taps and drills bits sets uh, for doing all this custom stuff that I do. Um, but this is pretty simple uh, to do. One thing you're going to have to make sure you do have is, of course, with these hitches, they don't send the uh, any hardware to fasten them on. You know, neither the truck end or the trailer end. So I've got some M2 by 6 um, stainless hex headed screws that I'm going to attach it with. And before I tighten any of them up, I'm going to make sure they all... Now, you could put some thread lock on these if you'd like. That's entirely possible. Um, i got to pay attention to what I'm doing here. Get ahead of myself. There, get it on there right, dummy. <laughs> even I make mistakes and get all four of them started in there first but yeah you could take and put a little bit of, of Loctite on them 
to uh, to ensure that they don't come loose. But the only problem I run into is some places when you use Loctite, is say for some reason I break this loop off and I've got these screws Loctite in here. These are M2 screws. Um, if they happen to shear off in there, you're kind of at a loss there. So kind of get them all kind of snugged up. And these hex bit drivers come with a lot of different um, uh, toys or models that I get. But I just grabbed this one because it was handy. Alright. There. It's done. Uh, that's that simple. Now when you go to go mount this, you'll kind of have to get your... Uh, Oh, get the height of your trailer, depending on how you mount it to your truck, uh, get the height of it so that it, you know, the trailer's not sitting there like this or sitting there with the back way up. And then that gets clamped into there. And then there's a little, it's a little hairpin, which is kind of a pain. But once it's in there, then this hairpin keeps that uh, the jaws from opening so that you know if it if you're going over terrain it can't open that way and it locks it in there real good and it's got quite a bit of swivel to it so I just thought it was pretty cool get it more like what the real ones are and then that lets it open up uh, I'm, I have a feeling I'm going to have to buy some extras of these. I have a feeling I'm going to be losing a bunch. But, um, yeah. Then you mount that other the other half on your truck. You end up with a, a bunch of these left over because the only way they sell it as a kit. But if you have as many dump trucks as I do, I have them all switched over uh, to the pedal hitch style. Not all of them, but uh, all but one. But anyway... Hopefully that kind of helps everybody out if they ever have a question on on how to do that, uh, changing that. I wish I had had somebody show me how to do it and would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of screws removed and trying to figure out how it came apart. But I'll, I'll show you coming up some of the pinnel hitches on the trucks. Got the pinnel hitch on my one Tamiya truck here, Tamiya Semi. Um, Got another Tamiya over here that they had the pinnel hitch on. I already had it for the hitch ball, and I just end up. And there's one under there, and I got one on that latest Mac, Red Mac that I did. But anyway, so that's kind of what I've been doing this afternoon, kind of to keep myself occupied. So anyway, hopefully it helps somebody out. Catch you guys later.